Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Shalom. Good morning. Good morning, folks. Today is Thursday, February 22nd. Um, February 22nd, 2018. And uh, today is the Feast of the Chair of Peter. The Feast of the Chair of Peter. It's a feast where we um, celebrate uh, the designation of St. Peter as the uh, first pope, as the vicar of Christ on earth. And, um, and the Bishop of Rome, well, you know, uh, eventually all of those titles uh, got uh, formalized uh, on Peter. So the primacy of uh, the papacy, the primacy of the papacy. And uh, uh, that's February 22nd. And today also is the birthday of? Who? Oh. George Washington. Who? George Washington. George Washington. The first, the first president of the United States. Okay. So just uh, a, a little, um, okay, anyway, <laughs> we'll do it later. Let's read the gospel from St. Matthew. Chapter 16, verses 13 to 19. So here goes. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied to him, or Jesus said to him in reply, <clears throat> Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay. So beautiful, beautiful gospel, which is loaded, really loaded with meaning. There's so much in this short gospel here that uh, we can try to understand. Okay. And so we'll try to, uh, to uh, go through them uh, point by point, one by one. <clears throat> and one of the first uh, important things here to consider is how Peter uh, blurted out with that correct answer as to who Jesus was. Up to this point, it looks like most of the, uh, most of the Jews still did not understand who Jesus was. Right? They still uh, did not accept the fact that he was the Messiah. That's why the question of Jesus was, um, who do people say I am? So, Do they know me already? Do they know me well enough? And it looks like, according to the apostles, the people still do not understand who Jesus was. They were still thinking he might be John the Baptist, he might be Elijah, um, you know, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then he turned to the apostles and said, but what about you? Who do you think I am? Who do you say that I am? Do you really know me already? And, and when... St. Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of uh, the, the living God. It looks like Jesus was um, impressed by the answer. And, and um, to the point where it seems like he wasn't even expecting that that would be the answer of St. Peter. That is why he praised him. And said, you know what? This didn't come from you. This kind of an answer was something that did not 
come from you alone. This was a product of grace. You had been given the grace by my father to deliver that kind of answer. And there was where it was like the indication that St. Peter was the one chosen by God the Father to lead the others. By giving him, by giving St. Peter, the grace of that understanding and wisdom to understand that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. So that was like the sign, right? Whoever was to give the correct answer was the sign to Jesus that he was going to be the leader of the rest of them. And that, that uh, answer came through St. Peter. And because of that answer, Jesus immediately uh, recognized it, recognized it, and, and conferred on him the primacy of, the primacy of the position of leader of the rest of the apostles. And in that manner also conferred on him the honor and the dignity of being his vicar, his, his uh, deputy, so to speak, his vice. Okay? It's like being the vice president, the vicar. That's what vicar means, the stand-in, the one who represents Okay. So, uh, in this case, in this case, uh, Peter, the first pope, was the one and is the one who stands in for Jesus. Here on earth, that's what the role of the pope is. He's the one who stands in for Jesus Christ. Okay? He is Jesus Christ on earth. Okay, so, the election of St. Peter. Now, uh, listen to what, to what Jesus said. Uh, Simon, son of Jonah, his real name was Simon, not Peter. But because of his calling, because of the special role he was going to play, uh, Jesus conferred on him not only a, a, a new office, a new honor, a new position, but even a new name to signify the change of roles. See? And you would note that Jesus has done that many times in, in other situations as well. And, and that is why it became, it became a tradition in the church. See, uh, Not only the popes change their names, but even sometimes nuns. See, When they, when they, uh, when they go through their um, uh, vocational um, commitments, there comes a point in time when they change their name into something else to signify... Their calling, the, 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 the calling they had received from God. Um, and that's following the tradition that Jesus himself um, you know, initiated. He did the same with St. Paul, see, who was previously Saul. And changed his name to Paul because of the mission that he was going to carry out. Okay? So, uh, beautiful, beautiful um, uh, little indication of... of, of uh, uh, being given a special, some kind of a special mission, right? Um, an indication of being uh, part of the elect, part of the, uh, uh, the um, chosen. Okay, but Jesus, so Jesus gave him a different name, called him Peter, okay? Peter, uh, Cephas, okay? Which meant rock, rock, because uh, Peter signified solidity solidity of faith see the solidity of faith peter had a lot of that faith faith in jesus christ faith that he was the son of god see? and and when our lord said thou art peter and upon this rock see from now on your name is going to be peter you're going to be the rock of the church you're going to be the solid foundation of the church upon which the whole church is going to be built okay but what is that, what makes, the, the, what makes Peter the solid rock? Okay. The solidity of Peter is actually based on the solidity of his faith. Okay. 
It is not because Peter was strong and was uh, burly and was macho and muscular. Uh, that's why he was the rock. Huh? <laughs> we, have, we have a celebrity in Hollywood who's called the rock, right? Uh, but that is because of his, of his uh, physique. In the case of St. Peter, right? Yeah, he might be a big man being a strong fisherman, but that was not the basis of the solidity of St. Peter. Eh? It was rather the strength and the power of his faith. And that is how the church is built and has been built. It is built upon the faith of, well, the faithful. <laughs> that's, why, that's why the people of the church are called the faithful. Okay? Because that is where the church is built upon. It is built upon the solidity of the faith of the people of God. Beginning from that faith exhibited by St. Peter. Okay? So he was the foundation. And uh, upon his fidelity, many other faithful came to the church. Many other people who exhibited that faith in Jesus Christ came to the church and built the church to be stronger, 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 and stronger uh, for the last more than 2,000 years now. And, and, you see, another nice point here. Jesus promises, okay, I'm going to build my church, and you are going to be the foundation of this church. And I'm going to promise you that the gates of the netherworld will not win over you, will not prevail against you. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. Okay? There was a promise, a divine promise on the part of Jesus Christ. He was going to protect this church. That he, what he himself was going to make sure that hell, Satan, is never going to be able to topple this church. And that has been true. That promise has been kept and is true up to now. You know, so the church has gone through so much persecution that is really, really, even humanly, uh, almost impossible to overcome. Could you imagine the whole strength of the Roman Empire? Right? All the armies and all the strength of the military, uh, the military strength of the Roman Empire going against the church. Hunting down all the apostles, killing them, practically all of them, with the exception of St. John. Uh, uh, killing uh, everybody who followed the church. That's why we have the first martyrs. See, Hundreds if not thousands of people uh, um, who have been martyred because of the faith during as early as the Roman times. right? And it has not stopped. The persecution in the church has not stopped. Up to now, people are attacking the church. Right? Up to now, well, we have the most recent examples even in our own country right here, the United States. Right? Imagine all the antagonism against Catholics from the time of President Obama. Right? I'm sorry, folks, I'm not trying to be political here. We're just being, we're just being truthful. Right? We're just being real. Could you imagine the administration of the, the strongest president of the world? Right? The president of the, of the strongest uh, uh, country in the world, President Obama himself, okay? going against the church in many, <laughs> many more ways than one. We just have to look at all of the uh, uh, policies on health care and things like that that he instituted, right? That, he, that his government even sued the poor nuns okay? for not uh, following the uh, health care mandate. Okay? So the persecution in the church has been going on and it's going on up to now. But look, the church stands strong. The church stands firm. Why? Because Jesus Christ himself promised the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And, and you know, in his re after his resurrection, which we're going to hear about sooner, uh, soon already, he also again said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit will be with my church. Okay? That is why have no fear. Have no fear. Do go. Go do your mission in the world. Because I'm going to be with my church. See? So you better bet your life on it. The church is going to be here forever. <laughs> and uh, whoever tries to uh, topple it and go against it is being a fool. Being a fool. Really. 
Okay. Now, the next thing, the next beautiful thing about this is uh, what is called the power of the keys. The power of the keys. Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever sins you <clears throat> bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. <clears throat> Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, that's what's called the power of the keys. Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom of heaven to, to Peter, the first pope, and to his successors and to his delegates after that, right? The, the bishops. Now, there, there are three things that are related to the keys, the symbol of the keys, uh, um, um, are, are related to three important uh, functions, so to speak, of the church and of the Pope. Okay? One is the teaching authority. Okay? The teaching authority. That, that the, the, the Pope and, and the church, the bishops, have the teaching authority, that they are teaching uh, what is true. Okay? What is true and what is needed for salvation. Teaching authority. The second one is the forgiveness of sins. Okay? So here is where we also derive, see, the, uh, the, uh, the origin of confession. See, whatever you lose or bind, okay? and that includes sins, because that's the ultimate binder uh, that binds us to, to, to Satan, binds us to hell. So if we're loosed from that, okay? then we go to heaven. We have, the, we have access to heaven. See? So... Uh, binding and losing. So <clears throat> this is the this is the, uh, the the origin, the root of confession was the power given to Peter and the priests to forgive sins. Then the third power of the keys has to do with um, um, making a, a an important decision as to who can be part of the communion within the church or or. To be excluded from that communion. Yeah. So the power to excommunicate. Okay. Or the power to include. Meaning that, in, that begins from even baptism. See. See. So the power to include. Who, to, who will be included in the communion of the saints. And who will be excluded. Which is like a prefiguring of who's going to be included in heaven and who's not. Okay? So by very, very powerful uh, functions that the, uh, the Pope has been given okay? and which has, of course, been delegated to uh, the bishops to a certain extent and the priests, okay? the clergy. So these are the, uh, the beautiful pointers that we can uh, try to understand from this gospel today and the feast today, which is the feast of the chair of St. Peter. Okay? So today, folks, let's pray for the Pope in a very special way. It is nice to pray for the Pope every day, as we do every day, pray for the Pope in the Rosary and the Mass, right? But today, let us pray with, with even more special attention for our current Pope, who is? Pope Francis. Pope Francis. Pope Francis. We will pray with more intensity for Pope Francis. Francis today let's offer up all of our work all of our study all of our chores all of our prayers let us pray very specially today for our Pope who needs plenty of our prayers okay you know very well that the Pope uh, the Pope uh, these days uh, is um, burdened with so many so many difficulties we've been hearing a lot of it in the news okay so we have to pray very hard for our Pope today. There's a little trivia. Uh, and, and, and by the way, uh, not only trivia, but a, a proof that from Peter, there was a continuous succession of Popes. Do you know that? That the, the Pope, the line of Popes has been unbroken since St. Peter's appointment. And that is another proof to you, to everybody, that the Catholic Church is the only one true church. Okay? Because it's only the Catholic Church that has an unbroken succession. All the other so-called Christian churches don't enjoy that. They don't have that. Very clearly, they are the breakaway. They're the ones who broke away from the only one true church. Because Christ only appointed one Pope. And from that Pope, all the successions happened. And there was a chain of succession which was unbroken. 
unbroken and the apostles the same okay so let's ask let's uh, let's see a little trivia here who was after saint peter who was the second pope i don't know <laughs> starts with an l jana who is it huh uh, <laughs> saint linus saint linus was the one who succeeded saint peter and who was the third pope <laughs> Saint Anacletus. Anacletus is the third pope. Okay, who was the fourth pope? Saint Clement. Saint Clement the first. Okay, Saint Clement the first. Who was the fifth pope? Saint Evaristus. What? You haven't heard of him, <laughs> Saint Evaristus. But you see that we know all of these popes. See, the church has kept a record of all of the successions of these popes. So we are sure, we know, we know uh, all, the, all the popes in history from St. Peter. How wonderful and amazing is that? Eh? And do you know what, what else is amazing? We know all the successors of the, of the apostles. You do? Yes, we do. You know that every bishop that gets ordained as a bishop, like our new bishop now, Okay? He will be ordained under the line of a specific apostle. There is also a continuous line of succession of the apostles. They were the, the, they were the bishops, the first bishops. So whoever they ordained as bishop, as next bishop after them, we know who that was. And we know the next one, the next one. The next one. So there's also an unbroken chain. Wait, so they ordained their bishops, other bishops? Yes. Yeah, bishops are ordained by the other bishops, so they they have a they know they know the succession, they know the line. See, see, amazing, amazing proof of unity and continuity of the Catholic Church. Okay, okay, folks, that's it for us. We will have to go to mass and catch up. We're a little late. <laughs> okay, see you, folks, next time. Have a good day, everybody. Bye bye. bye, -bye.